Hi, I'll go over lab seven of PCA 285, which is regarding OPAP um, second analysis. So experiment one is just a simple circuit where you're supplying voltage, an AC voltage to a resistor. Um, so I'll just quickly do that. Um, so here's my 1K um, and then I'll just connect my channel one's positive terminal and negative terminal across that resistor. And then I'll have supply my voltage using the AC voltage using a yellow cable, which just fed into a green. So it's still the yellow cable coming from the 82. And then I'll just ground the circuit. And then I will observe this frequency or this waveform. So uh, I'm supposed to supply a three volt amplitude um, at 500 Hertz. I'm gonna switch that up. So I will get different results than you. That's okay, that worked, cool. So let me open up Scopy. And then go to signal generator. And then I'm just gonna saw, um, input a two volt peak to peak at 1K with a duty to echo of 50%, which means 50% of the time it's active, 50% of the uh, other time it's deactivated. So it's zero or like lower. Um, and then I'll just go and input that. And then I'll just turn on my oscilloscope. And then you see how this looks like a two volt peak to peak at a frequency of 1K. And that is roughly it. So this, where it says like 2.3, I'm uh, interpreting that extra voltage as the little tiniest peak. So you see how it's not a perfect, um, uh, square wave that's going to be when it transitions from a low to a high there's going to be an overshoot and that's the reason why it's higher so if you want to blow up the image so zoom in you want to decrease the number of divisions you want to click on the two parallel lines to the right of whatever channel you're looking at and then go to vertical and then decrease and so if you decrease the division or voltage per division you see how there's more of a peak so that's probably why there's an extra voltage um, at the peak to peak when we're supplying a two volt peak to peak but you're observing 2.3 so that's how you do for uh, how you do experiment one for experiment two you have an integrated circuit where you have um, a capacitor and a resistor as your feedback um, component while you have a load and you have an input resistance so I have my circuit made. So here it is. Um, I'm using a 10 nanofarad capacitor right here. That's this little fellow right there. I'm still using 100K. Oh, that became disconnected. Let me reconnect that. Okay. So now I'm just gonna grab my circuit. So this is my 10K, 100K, 100K, and then the 10 nanofarad capacitor. So I'm gonna put both all of my negatives um, from my channels at ground. Okay, and then I'm gonna have my channel one, the yellow cable, um, measure the input voltage. So I'm putting my yellow cable and my orange cable um, together with my input voltages. And then I'm putting my channel two is positive at my output. And then make sure you're supplying your positive and negative voltage to your op amp. I'm applying them to the rails like before, and then I'm shorting um, both these sides together so that they that way the positives on both rails match um, each other and then the negatives match each other. So then I'm gonna connect them properly. Okay, this should be it. Then I'm gonna just connect this. Okay, so now I'll just show it a scopy and I'm supposed to input a one volt peak sine wave at 1k as its frequency. So let me go and switch it to sine right there, 1k, two volts, and then I'm not measuring an output and that's because I don't have my power supplies turned on. So let me just turn on both of my power supplies. Now, if I look at it, I'll see a voltage. Oh, that's supposed to be square. That's why I'm, I was getting funky results square and now you'll see you get a triangular wave as your output 
Um, you'll see something similar to what I have. Um, it should give you a triangular wave as your output, but my capacitance is larger. So that's why it looks prettier than what you would probably get. Um, but let me just decrease it. So yeah, that pretty much looks like a triangular wave. Okay, and that's what an integrated circuit is supposed to do. Okay, for part three, for the differentiator, um, I have essentially the same layout, but I replaced a few components. So I replaced that one microfarad uh, with a 100 nanofarad and that 5.1 with a 100 nano, sorry, a 100 um, ohm resistor and that 2K, sorry, that 10K R2 is still the same. So I'll open up Scopy. Um, I'll actually show you my setup. So here's what it looks like. And so my channel one is recording the input voltage, which is coming from in the yellow, but also connected to the green cable right there. I have grounded my circuits, and then here's my load resistor over here, the 10K, and then that's the 100 ohm. And so now I will input the DC voltage to power the op amp. Then I will go into signal generator and then input the two volts peak to peak, one kilohertz um, triangular wave. And then I'll go to my oscilloscope and collect some data. So we can easily see our input um, triangular wave, but we can't really see um, the output. Well, we can, but it looks like it's fluctuating, but it doesn't look like there's, um, it looks like it's a constant voltage. But if you go to the channel two settings, which is the two, the clicking, uh, excuse me, if you go into the settings of channel two, which is clicking the two hor horizontal lines and go under volt per division, if you decrease that, well, before you do that, make it so that it's centered. So decrease it until it's in the middle of the plot. And then if you decrease that volt per division, you can, you could see how the, input is, sorry, because of the triangular input, the output looks like a square wave. Uh, mind you, it is very small and compressed, but it still is a sine wave that you can observe if you um, decrease the voltage for division um, to a low value. And that is how you would do experiment seven, sorry, lab seven of EC285. Good luck.